what do we think of these Ghostbusters? Are they to be taken seriously? Who are you going to call? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Ghostbusters 2016 facts. Well, I believe in science. Uh, I mean, I, I believe in entertainment, and I think to contemplate the ideas of, of ghosts and, and survival of the consciousness, it's very, very entertaining. For this list, we're taking a look at trivia and interesting information surrounding Ghostbusters. I, I just got bombarded with the most positive, excited tweet. I mean, for a day, and I was just like, oh my God, this is so great. And yeah. then suddenly, bad ones started coming in and then all of a sudden it's just an onslaught and then you realize oh my god and then just a this tidal title. wave of hate <laughs> just to clarify we're talking about sony's reboot of the franchise and not the original 1984 classic ready let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown number 10 it's a reboot not a sequel it's a class for apparition while technically the third entry in the franchise this 2016 film is not ghostbusters 3 in fact, it's not even a sequel. Rather, it's a full reboot that won't follow the continuity of the previous two movies. Another cast of characters will be crossing the streams in a different universe. When asked why the film would be a reboot and not a traditional follow-up, director Paul Feig explained that he wanted to bring this franchise to a new generation and allow the new team's origin story to develop. We have dedicated our whole lives to studying the paranormal. Now there's sightings all over the city. We may not get to see Peter Venkman pass the torch, or the proton pack in this case, but Feig seems confident that the reboot route will give Ghostbusters a fresh start. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh did you want to? Sorry. sorry, I'll let you. I'll let you. Next time. Okay. Number nine, many stars turn down roles. Someone is creating a device that amplifies paranormal activity. And we might be the only ones who can stop it. When it was announced that the Ghostbusters reboot would have four female leads, some of the funniest and most charismatic ladies in Hollywood were considered. Jennifer Lawrence and Rebel Wilson met with Paul Feig about joining the cast. But you guys are going to get pitch slapped so hard, your man boobs are going to concave. The filmmakers apparently also thought about enlisting Anne Hathaway as a doctor named Anna. Emma Stone was notably offered a role, but she turned it down. Although Stone found the script funny, she didn't feel like committing to another franchise on the heels of The Amazing Spider-Man. Rick Moranis, who played Louis Tully in the first two Ghostbusters movies, also declined the chance to make a cameo. The Canadian comedian felt that after nearly 30 years, it just didn't make much sense to revisit the franchise. This is it! This is the sign! Number 8. Saturday Night Live alumni aplenty. Cool. How do normal people I have kiss? literally no idea. Let's just try something. Let's just do it. I'm sorry, guys. What was that? What? 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 Speaking of Emma Stone, the actress was on Bill Murray's fan casting list for a female Ghostbusters crew. Murray also suggested Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy, both of whom ultimately landed leading roles. Wiig reigned as a queen of comedy for several years on Saturday Night Live. I had to fake my own death and disappear. My psycho mother was trying to kill me. And I couldn't put you in that kind of danger. Three other actresses in the film, Kate McKinnon, Leslie Jones, and Cecily Strong, have all been official SNL cast members as well. McCarthy, while never an SNL regular, has hosted the sketch comedy series multiple times and picked up a few Emmy nominations in the process. Of course, Ghostbusters has always had strong ties to SNL, seeing as how Murray and Dan Aykroyd were among the not ready for primetime players in the 1970s. The FBI has a new theory on the Jimmy Hoffa case. Thank you. It's Colonel Mustard in the drawing room with the candlestick. <laughs> Number seven. Ghostbusters 3 stalled for over 20 years. Now, it, it, and I keep hearing talk about a Ghostbusters 3, and, but you... It's a nightmare. Yeah, this is my nightmare. When people think of movies trapped in development hell, Ghostbusters 3 is a title that instantly comes to mind. Ironically, Dan Aykroyd actually wrote a script in the 1990s entitled Ghostbusters 3, Hellbent, which would have taken place in a hellish alternate reality. While this film never got off the ground, it did inspire the 2009 Ghostbusters video game. All right, Ace, get ready. Dr. Stance, if you'd do the honors. Proud to, Dr. Venkman. Another premise involved Peter Venkman dying and coming back as a ghost. However, Bill Murray was never too enthusiastic about returning to the franchise. Following the death of Harold Ramis in 2014, Aykroyd seemingly abandoned the idea of a traditional Ghostbusters 3. But that same year, 25 years after Ghostbusters 2 hit theaters, it was announced that Paul Feig would be directing a reboot. We can provide a real service. <laughs> Number 6. 
Paul Feig versus Ghostbusters haters. These are four of the funniest Proven people funny. on the planet yes. that happen to be women. Right. When it was announced that Ghostbusters would have an all-female cast, the internet was flooded with complaints and sexist remarks. Even Donald Trump gave his two cents. They're remaking Indiana Jones without Harrison Ford. You can't do that. And now they're making Ghostbusters with only women. What's going on? After being relentlessly harassed on Twitter, Paul Feig retaliated against his haters, ultimately telling them to, quote, just let this movie happen. During a 2016 interview, the director said, quote, geek culture is home to some of the biggest a-holes I've ever met in my life. Feig would later clarify this statement, however, saying, quote, I have never met anyone from the geek world face to face who wasn't a warm, kind person. Forget it, Finkman. You had your chance to cooperate, but you thought it'd be more fun to insult me. Well, now it is my turn, wise ass. Number five, Ecto-2. <laughs> part hearse, part ambulance, the Ecto-1 is one of the most recognizable vehicles in all movies. And the classic car will return in the Ghostbusters reboot with a Slimer hood ornament. Uh, you didn't disclose that the vehicle was going to be a hearse. It's a Cadillac! But the film will also see the debut of the Ecto-2. No, we're not talking about the aerial vehicle of the same name from the real Ghostbusters cartoon. Rather, this Ecto-2 will be a motorcycle, which has apparently been modified with a proton pack and other accessories. Set photos and previews have revealed the dirt bike being driven by Chris Hemsworth, who plays the world's hunkiest receptionist. With a hot rod like this, Thor looks like he's ready to answer the call. Ghostbusters. Number four, Neil Casey plays the villain. Brian, did you have sex with someone in my workshop? While not a household name, Neil Casey has received praise for his work as a writer on Inside Amy Schumer and Saturday Night Live. He's also jumped in front of the camera on several occasions, making guest spots on sitcoms like Broad City and starring in Paul Feig's sci-fi comedy series, Other Space. I couldn't be less pleased to be here. However, my mother needed my sleeping chamber at home as her Pilates studio. In the Ghostbusters reboot, Casey plays a baddie known as Rowan. Feig describes Casey's character as, quote, a regular New Yorker whose goal is to bring some things back to this world. He wants to trap ghosts, but for a different purpose. Let's see if Rowan can give the likes of Gozer and Vigo a run for their money. I gotta tell you, this is all a mess. None of this is necessary or helpful. Number three, Ghostbusters Virtual Reality. We have a gift. We see what no one else is willing to see. Have you ever dreamed of becoming a real Ghostbuster? If so, prepare for an epic invasion. Sony Pictures has teamed up with The Void to create a virtual reality attraction known as Ghostbusters Dimension. Debuting at Madame Tussauds in Times Square on July 1, 2016, this experience allows participants to virtually hunt ghosts in a New York apartment building. Equipped with a proton pack and specialized gun, users will additionally get to visit a haunted mansion, New York's underground subway tracks, and the Ghostbusters headquarters. In addition, both Paul Feig and Ivan Reitman of the original Ghostbusters films have also contributed to the project. If this tie-in is as awesome as it sounds, we're ready to suit up. That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Number two, the original cast will make cameos. That is Ghostbusters. While none of the original Ghostbusters cast members will reprise their iconic roles, many of them will make cameos as different characters in this reboot. We won't see Rick Moranis or the late Harold Ramis, but Sigourney Weaver, Ernie Hudson, and Annie Potts are all on board. Despite initially refusing to take part in a third Ghostbusters film, Bill Murray eventually agreed to make an appearance here as well. Little is currently known about who exactly they're all playing, although Dan Aykroyd will reportedly pop up as a cab driver that interacts with Kristen Wiig. Oh, and Ozzy Osbourne is also in the movie, for some reason. <laughs> Ozzy? Holy shit. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. There's going to be a great new high sea flavor with an outrageous fruit taste. And what are we going to call it? Ecto Cooler. <laughs> high sea Ecto Cooler. Slimer's new fruit drink. You've been warned.
Number one, the most disliked movie trailer ever. There's a bigger picture at hand here. These ghosts can possess the human form. As stated before, not everybody is happy that a Ghostbusters reboot is happening. If you need evidence, look no further than YouTube. They had all that time, and now a new Ghostbusters movie finally gets made, as if now it's appropriate? After the film's first official trailer was posted online in March 2016, the viewer response was more negative than positive. By May 2016, it became the most disliked movie trailer in the history of YouTube. With 649,900 downvotes against roughly 221,400 likes. How bad is that? Well, the trailer for Fifty Shades of Grey currently has a little over 30,000 dislikes on YouTube. Enlighten me then. While the Ghostbusters trailer has been criticized for a variety of reasons, it's not like previews always properly represent movies. So let's just reserve judgment until July 15th when the film hits theaters. The Do you agree with our list? It doesn't matter. What's your favorite Ghostbusters fact? I will kick the unliving crap out of you, and you, especially you. <laughs> For more ectoplasmic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I'm sorry, I don't mean anything by this. It's just all that was left that was clean.